everybody and welcome to today's video. We are here today to talk about Seven Pirates H. This is the latest Idea Factory RPG that has been localized by East Asia Soft for the Western market and it belongs to the same series as Moro Crystal, Moro Chronicle and those games. I think this is the fourth game in that kind of series from memory. It is different to the other ones, but the thing that links them all together is their extreme level of fan service. Even by Idea Factory standards, this is fan servicey, and to the point that I was genuinely worried that a lot of the footage, if I was to put it on the in, in the video and on the screen, would get my channel black marked. I'm going to describe some of what goes on this in this game, but I am deliberately not showing a lot of it because. I just don't want that for my channel. But if you enjoy fan service, you're going to get a good laugh out of this one because they really do push things as far as anything that I've seen on the Switch. The Switch has plenty of fan service games from indie visual novels that really amp things up there or are ports of adult visual novels that have had a couple of key scenes removed but maintain the fan service. We all know what those games are. There's also, of course, Idea Factory's own output, including the previous games in this series. There is Dead or Alive Extreme 3. There's a lot of fan service on the Switch. Within that, this is probably the most fan service game of them all. This one is pushing boundaries. Um, and I'm amazed that Nintendo let it on there, but at the same time, given Nintendo's direction, I'm not that amazed. Nintendo seems to be the one publisher out there that is supporting of fan service. They don't allow you to do the full adult game, but they are certainly allowing you to, to go as far as this, which is pretty far. So just to give you a verbal description of what you can do, one of the key mini games and the way that you level your characters up is not just by getting experience points as they fight battles. Um, they eventually fill in a potion, which you can then use to level the character up. And when you use that potion, you play a mini game in which you need to massage your character's chest. And that really is what you do. You massage the character's chest in very various directions. And in doing so, you boost their booby power, which is what the game calls it. And that increases their stats. So it is a mini game that if certain people see it, will open eyes. It will... This will never be a game that comes out on a PlayStation or Xbox console for that reason, but it is certainly um, amusing, I want to say. There's another variation of that mini game that you unlock soon enough where you place <laughs> where you place an egg between the girl's boobies and then massage them to break the egg. And when you do, you may get a rare item out of doing so. If so, then great but a lot of the eggs don't have rare items in them either, and when they break, they send white fluids, which looks exactly like you have in your mind right now, across her chest. So this is the kind of game that we're dealing with here, and without beating around the bush here, if you like fan service, then you're going to get a kick out of this. If fan service makes you uncomfortable on any level, then obviously you should not play this. But it does play nicely. It is a very nice little RPG. It is short and to the point. There are certainly many longer RPGs out there. But this one doesn't overstay its welcome. It knows that it's there for comedic, comedic effect. It knows it's kind of that silly fan service game and doesn't give you time to get desensitized to it all. It moves on. It lets you move on and play something else before you get bored of its qualities. Uh, but within what it is, it's quite nice. So where previous games in this series were either card-based uh, RPGs, or if you could even call them RPGs, they were card-based kind of uh, strategy games, that's the word I'm looking for, or they were first-person dungeon crawlers in the vein of wizardry or whatever, this one is a behind-the-back RPG, which is much more in line with the likes of Hyperdimension Neptunia. So you're running around relatively small areas, fighting enemies in a very turn-based combat style, 
and then being returned back to the world to explore a bit on. You do eventually get the ability to explore a bit further. So, for example, at the start of the game, the water blocks you, but you do unlock a, a power-up or an ability to navigate through the water soon enough. And as you do, these areas do grow a little bit and become a little bit more involved. But for the most part, it is much like Hyperdimension Neptunia. You move from point A to point B, fight a boss battle, then move on to the next area. The difference is, again, that fan service. And it seems strange to say that this game is kind of taking the fan service of Hyperdimension Neptunia to the next level because most people know that Hyperdimension Neptunia gets plenty fan service enough. But this one really does put your 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 eyes are full of the fan service in every moment of every battle. It seems like all the special attacks are there to draw your eye to certain parts of the anatomy when a battle is won. Each girl does a little uh, victory animation, which again is designed to draw your eyes to certain parts of her. And when you uh, take either do damage, sorry, it is just when you do damage, as you do damage, you build up uh, a power meter. When that gets to full, the girl enters a kind of uh, ecstasy state and she'll do a little animation where she kind of touches herself all over and that unlocks a really powerful special ability which is pretty flashy in terms of the, um, in terms of the animation, in terms of the, the visual design behind the special attack. But uh, getting to that point is is very fan service as well. I, I really can't... I mean, you, you see a little bit of it in the footage as you're watching me talk, but I, I really can't um, describe just how fan service this game gets. And I, I like my fan service, so I find it amusing. And certainly the game is presented in such a way that it is meant to amuse rather than titillate. You look at a game like uh, Dead or Alive Extreme, for example, and... The point of it is titillation. You're actually meant to get kind of voyeuristic and appreciate these girls' bodies because they're very attractive and, and all that kind of stuff. The, the humour is secondary in that game. In this one, the humour is definitely first and foremost. It runs on the basic idea that sex themes and uh, sexual humour is funny and it just runs with that. It doesn't apologise for it. It doesn't try and conceal it and... In many ways, it's one of the most honest fan service games that you can play. So I enjoyed it on that level. I also enjoyed it as a game. So the, the combat system is very classical turn-based stuff. The enemies that you fight are very amusing because most of them are sexual in some way, but in a very kind of comedic, phallic way. There's, there's a lot of kind of phallic humor in, in the enemy designs, which is which is perfectly funny. The way the characters are unlock abilities is, is great. Each of the characters has their own utility in combat. There's a good range of passive and supporting abilities, but also aggressive abilities. The boss battles do become quite difficult. Uh, the only issue I guess I would have with the game is that because it is relatively short in its run length, the difficulty spikes that it throws in there to keep you playing for a bit longer can be pretty extreme. I don't get the sense that this one was particularly closely playtested. It doesn't have bugs and stuff, at least I haven't encountered any, but it just feels very raw. It feels like it was quickly put together because they had this joke and they wanted to run with it. And in doing so, there are some raw edges, particularly around the difficulty spikes. But at the same time, if you have played enough Compile Hard or Idea Factory games, Hyperdimension Neptunia has difficulty spikes like this, so you won't be put off by that if you have any any experience with these games at all. I don't have too much else to say about this. I do have a review up on digitallydownloaded.net, but I liked it. And I also liked the pirate theme, actually. Um, we don't have too many pirate-themed JRPGs. There'll often be a pirate character... There'll be a pirate section where you need to go and steal a pirate ship or whatever, and that goes right back to the original Final Fantasy. But we don't have too many games where piracy is the entire focus. And even though the characters are there primarily to be booby jokes, and um, most of the humour 
or most of the interactions between these characters is in support of those sexualized humor. The characters themselves are fun and light and they're pretty well designed. There's a good range, so it doesn't really matter what kind of fan service you're into, whether you're into the big opai uh, chests or you're more a flat is justice kind of person, you are catered for with this game and I just reckon it was a hoot to make. Ultimately, for me, if I get the sense that a video game was fun to make and the people who made it had fun with it and weren't taking themselves too seriously, particularly where fan service is concerned, when it is just there for the sheer and un unadulterated humour of it, then I tend to be quite partial to it. And that's always been the case with ID Factory. That has been the case with this kind of series of four games to date. This one is the best example of that. It's kind of the most pure example of that fan service first, comedy first RPG that Idea Factory has been honing into with this series. While they've been doing some more serious stuff with other games and other genres, the fact that they've kind of concentrated all their traditional fan service into this little mini series makes it fun. And really, that's all I've got to say. So do check out my review on digitallydownloaded.net. If you enjoy my videos or my... Well, if you enjoy my videos first, do like and subscribe. That way you won't miss any. And as you would have seen, I'm getting back into the streaming things. Things are getting back into normal now that we've done the website redesign. So, yeah, like and subscribe and that way you won't miss anything. If you do want to support what we're doing both in terms of the videos here but also the written work over at digitallydownloaded.net, then please consider backing us on Patreon. You can do that for a dollar a month or more if you're feeling generous, but the minimum buy-in is a dollar a month. And in doing so, not only do you keep us going with all of this stuff, but you also get a monthly magazine, which is 56 pages long, and it goes in depth into all kinds of themes to do with Japanese art, not just video games, but also film and literature and music and all the rest. So it is a good one if you are into Japanese games, if you like this kind of game, then you're probably going to like what we're doing with the magazine. So, yeah, that, your support would be mostly most appreciated. And on that note, I will go. Do let me know what you think about this game, if you've enjoyed it, uh, if you enjoy your fan service, and I know a few of you who follow me on this channel do, then let's have a chat about it. Other than that, you won't see me stream, stream this one because I don't want my channel blacklisted. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I look forward to your thoughts about the game. Thanks as always for tuning in. We'll see you next time.